Okay, <clears throat> we should be recording now. Hello again, folks. This is Sula here. Today is the second day of Civ 6's release. I had a chance to play for a little over three hours yesterday and played the first hundred turns of a game. It was the first game, uh, what is it, Realms Beyond Adventure 1, which is a potluck game. Everybody was mailed out save states, or save, starting saves, and everybody plays on the same map, but doesn't necessarily get the same leader. And I ended up with Victoria. This is a Prince game with all standard settings otherwise, a Pangea map. So I'm going to go ahead and load, pick up from where we left off, which was turn 100. From the first of life and Civ 6 does seem to have kind of long load times for its saves, or at least on my machine. Hi, Sleeping Dragon. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day it is for you. Locally here, it's about 11 a.m. on a Saturday morning. Very nice weather outside today. Not that everybody can see that on the stream, of course. I had some time to... Oh, good. That was a little faster than the last time it loaded. I had a little time to think about this start between last night and this morning and a couple things come to mind one is i don't think this is a very good starting position overall oh hi sleeping dream we're finding brighton the way the city names work in this game is uh your capital is like the capital of your civilization or your leader so like london is always the capital for the uh english but then after that it randomly picks names from the city list which is kind of nice because in passive games always found it in like the exact same order and good morning to you uh, Arak I hope that's a good correct pronunciation so a couple of things I like I said I was thinking about one is I don't think this is an especially good starting position uh, number one because it seems as though access to fresh water is really really important in this game just because otherwise you get into a terrible housing crunch early on and London does not have access to fresh water, which is a pretty big deal. Um, like this city, Manchester, is actually a much better city. Once it finishes the aqueduct, it's going to be able to grow like crazy. So I kind of wish this had been my capital. Uh, so London's been kind of slowed down. Good afternoon, Silence of the Clams and Nakira. Good to see you both. Another thing that I was thinking about is I think even though I've put up a pretty good number of builders thus far. I still think that I should have more builders uh, because I'm still working a lot of tiles that are not improved, particularly like these rainforest and forest tiles, which are not bad tiles. Like if I highlight this one, like this is a 2-2 tile, which is quite good in this game, but I think I can still improve that further by um, clearing the obstruction, like clearing the rainforest or junk or forest and then um, putting up either a farm or a mine or something else. There are some things you can put on these. So for example, the forest tiles can be, uh, you can put a lumber mill on them, and I'm probably going to do that because I'm close to the tech that unlocks that. Uh, where is it? I was looking on the tree. That is machinery. So right here, lumber mill, plus one production on woods. You get another plus one production if adjacent to river. So riverside lumber mills look really good. And, um, Later in the game, it looks like you get another production, too, from steel. So, like, riverside lumber mills are, must be really good. The problem is I only have one river, and there are no forests next to that river, which is kind of a shame. Like, zero river. Like, literally, on the entire western part of this continent, there are no forests next to rivers. So lumber mills won't be that great, but I will put them on some of these forest tiles, I think, just to boost their yields. Uh, in addition to that, though, there's something else that's coming up on the civics tree that I've heard people posting about. And that's this, this feudalism. This is actually a really, really crucial um, thing on the civics tree. And it doesn't even list it unless you mouse over, which is pretty pretty amazing. Farm improvements gain plus one food for each adjacent farm when three farm improvements are adjacent to each other. So that's a pretty big deal. And I'd like to see if I could set that up in some location. So like right here, where is it? Oh, by the way, here's another, this is another problem in the game. There's like no visual dif distinction between a hill tile and a non-hill tile. So like this is a hill. This is not a hill. They look completely identical. That's a problem. So I'll turn on the yield so you can see. The ones that have two production are hills. The ones that don't, do not have, are not hills. Um, so I'm not sure if you can farm a hill tile. I'm going to have to test that to see. Yeah, and forest and rainforest are kind of tricky too. So like this is rainforest, this is forest. Yeah, and feudalism also unlocks a useful civic. 
um, civic card. Hold on. Where is it? Um, yeah, this is also really good too. Thank you, Silence. Newly trained builders gain two extra build actions. Extremely good. Um, better than the production bonus because the production bonus is uh, plus 30% production on builders. This is two extra build actions. That's making them 66% better. So like that's really good. So is, I mean, it, obviously it's no useful, not useful if you're not doing stuff with builders. But if you are, then it's super useful. So anyway, I want to try to set things up so I can have like three farms adjacent to each other to get that benefit. And I think I'm going to do it by clearing some of these tiles. Um, like I'd probably like to mine the hill tiles. That will drop their food output. Because um, like rainforest is plus one food, so like if I mine these two, it'll it'll they'll lose food. But Manchester has like ridiculous amounts of food anyway, so that shouldn't matter. And if I can put three farms next to each other, then they'll get the bonus, um, the bonus feudalism food. Like these three tiles, one, two, three, would be good choices for that, I think. Um, of course, this one's a hill tile, so I don't know if you can irrigate hills. I believe you can farm hills, but I'm not certain. Builders, okay, so Nakira, that's a good question. What's my take on um, builders as a thing as opposed to workers that stick around forever? If you're going to do one unit per tile, builders are better because you can't stack um, workers together. Like in Civ 5, one of the huge problems is you could not stack workers together to build an improvement faster. And the result was it took forever to put tile improvements down. So if you're going to use the one unit per tile rule, it's better. Um, if you're going to use stacking rules, then the worker are probably better. But um, I'm, I'm totally fine with the builder mechanic. The other thing I realized is aqueducts are super important. Um, like, you need aqueducts, especially if a city's not on uh, fresh water. So, like, I only have two cities on fresh water, Manchester and Sheffield. This is a really weak starting position for fresh water. So these two cities have been able to grow, but all my other cities have really struggled with housing. Um, Newcastle can build an aqueduct because the rules are... I will look them up in the Civilopedia real quick. Uh, districts, districts, here we go. Aqueduct. Must be placed adjacent to the city, so it has to be next to the city, one of the six tiles next to it, and then also next to a river, lake, oasis, or mountain. So a source of fresh water, river, lake, oasis, or one tile away from a mountain. So I kind of got lucky in that Newcastle is next, can build one next to a mountain. I didn't really do that consciously. Bradford's the same thing. I'll be able to build an, aqu uh, an aqueduct on this tile or this tile, probably this tile. Um, but my capital can't do that, and so it's kind of screwed. So I also have a settler en route right here, and I was thinking of settling a city here, but like any city here is going to suck because there's no way to build an aqueduct and it will not have enough housing to do anything. So I think I'm just going to put the settler on this tile here, which is on fresh water. We'll be able to build an aqueduct later, can put it here, potentially. Um, and then this area maybe we'll have to backfill later in the game. Hey Tactful Ogre, doing well, doing well. So I think I'm going to keep the tile yields on because I can't see the hills unless I have the tile yields on because the graphics are not distinct on what is a hill and what is not a hill. And um, so long term, so the goals for like today's session, obviously to keep building upwards, etc. Um, I'm going to try to do a lot of stuff with builders, and I'm also going to try to tech to medieval units, and then run over Rome so we get some experience with fighting. And then we'll figure out and go from there. I still don't really know what kind of victory condition we're going for. Overall, I've been enjoying the game, Tactful Ogre. There are some things that are frustrating, but I think part of it's a learning process, and part of it is just stuff innate to uh, Civ 6. But overall, the, the game has certainly has potential in a lot of areas. Okay, so what was that? Oh, we got another trader. Oh, cool. So I finished the other trader. So I want to do a route from... I want to do a route from Manchester to Bradford, just so I can get the road going through there. And then when my current trader runs out, I'll run a route from Bradford to whatever the city is down there. So let's move this Let's move this unit. It, the trade route doesn't have to start in London, I don't think. Can I, can I like, move to another city? Or how do I do this? There's got to be a way to send to another city. <laughs> Yeah, this game would certainly be a lot different from MMOs, that's for sure. Let me go to the trade route menu. Available routes. London to, London to, okay. But there's got to be a way to change the starting city. I'm trying to figure out how to do that. Choose a route. If anyone has played this game and knows how to do that, let me know. 
all. Okay. Because, like, I'd rather have this trade route start in a different city. And I do not know how to do that right now, but there should be a way to do that. Like, in Civ 5, you just tell it, I want to move it to another city. Um... Unit commands above its portrait. Okay, let's try that then. Ye uh, ah, thank you, Frodine. Thank you. You, <laughs> you saved me there. All right. That is not at all intuitive. Let's see. So we'll send it to Manchester and then run. That'll take a turn. Yeah, and then it can run from Manchester to Bradford. Okay. <laughs> Got it. All right. So London finished that. And what was I going to do? Um, I really do want to get an industrial zone down, because like right here, it's plus three production, which would be really nice, but I think before doing that, I want to get out a builder. Uh, builder's not that much cheaper, because like Newcastle needs a builder um, to help it out here. It needs to mine another tile, and we can probably chop this forest for another mine. That or build a lumber mill on it. That might be a better choice. But uh, anyway, so it, I want to build either Builder or... Hmm. I'm about to swap Civics in three turns. All right, let's do the Builder first. And then go from there. What's this? Oracle done. Okay. All right, you guys can just hang out here for right now. Oh, another thing. There are no strategic resources of any kind anywhere close to me. No horses, no iron. None. The closest iron is here, down below Zanzibar. So I have no strategic resources whatsoever. Like I said, I don't think this is a particularly great starting position. Also, I have no idea what all these units are doing. <laughs> I'm hoping they're not declaring war. If so, we'll just rush out some units. Um, oh, and I also turn off the unit cycling, because that's really obnoxious. Okay. So, there we go. Now we'll get a road going between these cities, too. Well, that was a fast turn. Oh, because all my units are fortified and just fog busting down here. That works. All right, go to that tile. Quiet turn, then. I don't think any of the cities grew. This is single player. The difficulty is Prince. I think it's in the below the video. It should say that. I think they're trying to explore. Oh, hello. We met China. Where did we meet China? There is nothing but a plank. Did they like wander a unit in range? Interesting. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and talk to him. All right. Chin's help you to welcome our delegation. Let's see. Intel report, our relationship is neutral. Different governments. Okay. He doesn't like Trajan, for whatever reason. What's his agenda? Likes civilizations not competing for wonders. Dislikes losing a wonder. Okay, so he likes wonders. I don't know a lot about the AI leaders yet in this game. Let's see if we can make a deal. Hmm, he has iron. Let's see, what would it take? I don't think so. Never mind. He has two cities to my, or he has three cities to my five. Let's see if he wants open borders. You'll accept it? Sure, why not? That'll help relations. Sure. For the aqueduct, it is the, so it, the aqueduct needs to be next to a city. It, so it has to be touching the city tile and also touching either a source of fresh water or a mountain. So those are requirements. So like right here, it's next to the city and it's also next to a mountain. Down here, I could build an aqueduct here because it's next to the city and next to the mountain. Yeah, this game definitely does have a high learning curve. Um, it's actually more complicated, I think, than some of the other recent Civ games. Certainly more so than um, than um, Civ uh, 5. I think it's more complicated. So we should be getting a boost to this tech shortly. We get a boost from um, finishing three specialty districts, and when that finishes, it'll boost the tech, so. That should be useful there. Rome has finished city walls, so that's useful to keep in mind. 
Chin is a salty Care Bear player on low difficulty, once every wonder. Yeah, I guess so, although that's fine for, um, for an AI leader. Let's see where he is in terms of the world rankings, just real quick. Uh, China is doing terribly. <laughs> <laughs> They're in last place. Well, close to it. Rome is also weak. We're way ahead because this is only Prince difficulty. All right, Sheffield did grow. Let me just see what tile it picked up. Um, okay, that looks right. It's working all the tiles I want it to work. Looks good. So we'll be able to swap civics next turn, which is good. Declares a surprise. Wait, what? He's actually attacking? What in the world? Is he think he's doing? Hmm, you know what? If Congo wants to be my enemy, let's not attack Rome. Let's attack Congo instead. All right, I don't know what this guy... Oh, okay, so China contacted us with the boat. All right, I don't know what this guy thinks he's doing. Like, does he actually think warriors are going to stop me? All right, so we get a chance to change policy. So we don't need the settler policy, so we can dump that. So let's, because I'm not building settlers now. All right, so let's drop that. Uh, I like the campus adjacency bonus. Let's get the builder production bonus because I'm going to be popping out builders. Um, I'd like to keep this going, but I do have this war to deal with. So let's swap that out. Swap the wildcard policy out for the unit production bonus and just pop out some units to deal with this joker. Also, I mean, it doesn't help that my army is like way down here. So let's try to bring some of them back. The archer in particular, the warrior is like whatever. But let's bring the archer back ASAP. All right, so do I have any units up here? No, <laughs> I have no units at all. That's fine. Um, I can rush by some of them and I can build. Uh, I got a lot of stuff almost finishing. So like builder almost done, aqueduct almost done. Holy site almost done. So, not too concerned. Newcastle seems to be on the front lines, though. So, if we're going to buy something, I'm really surprised that he decided to just declare a war like that. So, let's give him something else to worry about. Trajan loves me. So, um, make a deal. Joint war. He will not make a deal under any circumstance. Uh, Oh, he won't declare war on... Never mind. Can I get him to declare war on... What's his name? On Congo? Maybe not. Oh, well. Discuss. Oh. Okay. So. Purchase an item. Let's get an archer. That an archer in that city should be able to shoot down quite a few warriors. And I'll, I mean, warriors are pretty weak. Oh, and we have a new civic to buy. Um, I'm going towards feudalism, so let's grab this one. And be the target of a declaration of war. Well, we were, so we got that boost. Claim great person. Oh, we have enough for a great, um, a great scientist. So I passed on the first one. I probably should not have done that. Let's just recruit again. Our dedication to the ways of science. That'll boost something. Education. That was worth getting just to boost education, which unlocks universities. So what does this guy do? Triggers Eureka for two random technologies and the inspiration for one random civic. Must be on a completed campus. OK. Well, let's do that then. Not a huge fan of these random things. I should either be able to pick it, or it should say what it applies it to. Whatever. Towards divine right, castles, and astronomy. Okay. We also have an envoy to send. So let's see. Zanzibar is currently being attacked. So Rome's attacking it, so it might not be around that long. Um, plus two production industrial zones. I don't have any industrial zones yet. Maybe we'll go for this because I am building. Um, sure, we'll drop this into. Candy. Also, it's not too far away from Congo. Okay, so that works. We get a little chance to see some warfare here. Let's see what they actually do. The AI, I expect, is just as dumb as it's ever been in war. Okay, they have a lot of warriors. Like, a lot of warriors, but warriors are not very strong. So, we'll see. They have not actually landed. And, oh, wait, they landed one here at Sheffield. We'll see.
Morning. I am not watching. No, I have not been watching Worlds. Sorry. I've been at been working like at work. <laughs> So, yeah, we'll be able to crank out some units soon. Hopefully they have not brought enough units. I just did not think this was an attack because there's just, like, silly warriors wandering around. Did not seem like a war. But um, hopefully we'll see. If they pillage stuff, we'll just have to repair it. And hopefully we can crank out some units pretty quickly. Might need to rush ancient walls in some of these cities, too. I'm more concerned about Sheffield than Newcastle. Trading post created. All right. So our research and math is completed. We also got a city quest. So we, f we got the Eureka from finishing the holy site. Putting a trade route has created a trading post in the city of Sheffield. What does that mean? Trading post. I don't know what that means. Anyway, so we need some units here, obviously. Doesn't really matter that much what they are, just that we get them. Archers, probably. London, same thing. Let's get another archer. Two turns, okay. Um, so far, I think the game's pretty good. You can ask me directly. I'm sorry if I sometimes ignore things in the chat because I'm focusing on playing. Yeah, overall, I think it's pretty good. Oh, education. I can get that cheap. But uh, we might want to, since we're at war, let's grab this. We're going to get the boost for owning three archers, and then we can upgrade them to crossbows, and they should be able to shoot apart incoming warriors without much trouble. All right, so I've got an archer coming up. Got a couple more in production. This one can shoot. If they're, I think they're trying to go to London, I think. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, this city is more concerning overall. Um, how much does it cost to rush ancient walls? Just, all right, purchase ancient wall. Oh, it looks like I can't purchase ancient walls. That's interesting. Oh, maybe because I just bought a unit. Anyway, yeah, Sheffield's the only one that could be an issue, just because there are several um, warriors here. We'll see. I don't know how strong the cities are. The AI is not that great, I'm afraid. So I received an envoy from Hong Kong. Oh, I have another trade route. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so I'm going to transfer this to Bradford and then run a... Tr uh, a route from Bradford to whatever that new city is. Excellent. They're dist oh wait, no, no, it's not ancient walls are not a, a, a district. Okay, so builder, yes. Um that's right, I was gonna come down here and start improving some of the tiles at uh at Manchester. Let's do that. I wish units moved a little faster along roads, but oh well. Okay, so the AI is dumb as ever. Let's see, so Congo, wait, China and Congo declared war on America. Three declarations and Zanzibar declared war on Chin. Multi Wait, we had, okay, so we got a boost for finishing the aqueduct, apparently. All right, so let's crank out a unit. I'm building archers because they are very effective. So, one, yeah, this should be enough units to handle, and they can all then be upgraded to crossbows afterwards. All right, so the AI is dumb as a brick, as usual, and so instead of attacking Sheffield, it just wandered north for no reason and wandered west for no reason. So who the heck knows what, what all this is about. There's the aqueduct. It looks pretty cool. So now the housing situation is finally solved, at least temporarily, in Manchester. So let's look at the citizens. I want to work those high food tiles now. All right, so where is the crummiest tile that I'm working? Uh, let's see. 
all these tiles are pretty good actually but let's yeah do that because we'll grow in one turn and then we can grab that tile looks good <laughs> note that the ai is sailing around like an idiot doing absolutely nothing that should probably kill that unit it is at one hp <laughs> okay all right uh, in this city, let me see. So what happens when units invade? So I can't work a tile that they're standing on, obviously. Haven't done any pillaging yet. Because, like, they could have pillaged this tile and they didn't. I don't know if they can pillage a, a district. I guess they can. So maybe they're going to pillage the district, which would be annoying, but we'd be able to fix it. Um, so yeah, I'm already in a situation where I'm not too concerned. Like, I've already passed the point of being worried about this attack. Well, we'll be able to shoot this down really easily. They won't, I mean, they might do some pillaging, but we'll just fix it. Anyway, so yeah, what do I want to work on then? Um, I'd like to improve Newcastle, but there's too many units around it, so I'll have to come back to that. Um, let's try mining these tiles, clearing and then mining, so I can get more production. Because Manchester has food, it needs production. These three I think I will farm, these three tiles here. Alright, and you just sleep for right now, because you're running, going to run a, a trade route to this city, which is still like two turns away from founding. Alright. And poor mansion, poor new, little Newcastle. All right, let's see, where's the AI going to do? Probably pillage the district. Nope. Just continue shuffling around. Wait, did he move on my road? Did he? Was he able to use my road while at war with me? That shouldn't be possible. I don't even know why. Oh, that was for getting three archers. Because, like, this is a hill tile, right? He moved through a hill tile two moves. So unless he has some kind of promotion, he just moved on my road while being at war with me. That definitely should not be the case. Okay, that unit promoted. That's just bizarre. I don't understand that at all. So. Anyway, I'll start shooting him. And the other one went back into the water again, so whatever. Yeah, that has to be a bug, because like you can't use someone else's roads while you're at war with them. Like That has not been in any Civ game for ages. All right, let's see. So still good to grow. Did we pick up? Let's see. Well, this is also weird. There's an enemy unit standing on this tile, and we can still work the tile, which is very different from the last couple Civ games, so I don't know what's up with that either. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Uh, yes, workers are very worth it. You, you, this is a Civ game, it's all about tile management. You want to improve tiles. Simple as that. Um, I'm also curious, how much does it take cost to upgrade to... Oh wait, I don't actually have this tech, I can't upgrade yet. I was going to say, how much does it cost to upgrade? Okay, so let's move this to be in position to shoot these guys as they keep moving forward. And London, since we are not terribly worried right now. Start work on that industrial zone. Yeah, this guy. So I wanted to mine these tiles, but there's an enemy unit, so I'm just gonna have to chill for a turn. And this settler is almost there. It'll be on that tile next turn. All right, let's watch what the idiot AI does this turn. Oh, it turns around and shuffles back in the opposite direction. Okay. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Japan founded a religion. Yeah, this is not going well for you, is it? They have river-themed abilities. Oh, so we got a boost for having a large army. Okay. Alright. Shoot that guy. I can't shoot that far, okay. 
I guess I can't, because that's a hill tile and I can't shoot over the hill. Okay, something like that. All right. But the good news is you can now move here and remove rainforest plus, oh, let me assign a build, a build order next. Um, I want to build a market because I already have a commercial hub here. So, all right, now let's clear that. And then we're going to mine that next turn. So as you can see, it cost me a point of food there, but that's fine because the city has plenty of food already. Um, yeah, the city grows very fast anyway, because it has these five food tile, five food tile. And I'm going to, like I said, try to farm all these tiles to get the feudalism farming bonus. Try it at least. Yeah, so we're going to um, go after Congo next because that guy was a jerk and declared war on me, even though Rome would be a much more natural target. All right, Birmingham. And we're going to need to get a builder down there too. I may have to rush by a builder because it's in such an awkward spot. All right, so we finished an archer here too. Um, because I just finished a holy site, let's build the building for the holy site, which is a shrine. I still don't know if I'm going to be able to found a religion at all, but we might as well take a shot at it. I have not done a whole lot with faith in this game. Uh, no. I wanted to see... No, I wanted to manage citizens. I don't like the fact that it's like three separate menus for all this stuff. Okay. All right, and oh yeah, the new city. So we don't need housing because it's on fresh water. So we'll just go with the standard monument first build. And oh wow, that is a five food tile. Nice. I may rush by a builder down there. Okay, so let's see. You probably don't need to fog bust so much down there because we've got visibility. And you should be fog busting up here for barbarians. All right, you can just chill there for this turn. You keep shooting. I don't know quite where these units are going, just that um, if they move forward, I'll shoot them. All right, let's see where these units move. More shuffling, settle too close. All right, he still loves me though. Okay, so we don't need this policy anymore. Let's get back to the Great Writer. Because I'm trying to generate a Great Writer to see kind of what the heck they do. Um, the bill, all right, all that stuff looks good to me. Civic, yes. Okay, on to feudalism. And we need to build more farms to boost that. Actually, let's see. This is really cheap. I'm wondering if I can just grab this to get another envoy. Wouldn't be that bad. Because I don't think I'm going to have six farms. I need, think I need a couple more turns to build six farms. <laughs> High burninator and brick. Yeah, Trajan. So Trajan wants to be my friend, but he doesn't want me to settle cities anywhere near him. But if he's not going to claim this land himself, I'm certainly going to claim it. And what I should do is send the trade route to Birmingham. which I should have done last turn, but it's okay. Archer's available for a promotion. Yeah, I'm not surprised. So I'm going to promote because you actually can't continue to gain experience in this game if you have a promotion waiting. So this is good if you're just defending, but I don't expect to be doing much more of that. So that does eat up my turn. I can't attack because I promoted, um, but he wouldn't have been able to gain any more experience until after promoting, so... Not a well done dating sim. <laughs> Alright, so meanwhile, let's go ahead and build that mine. Ooh, the mine adds not one production, it added two production. Ooh, I did not know this. Did not know that. Hmm. So instead of being a 2 2, it's now a 1 4. That is good news. Very good news. 
That's better than I thought. All right, so let's make sure we're working that tile. This one, get rid of this tile. There we go. Very nice. So I can only have one more district, but that's fine. Apparently the aqueduct does not count as a district. That's interesting, because like I have campus and commercial hub. City center doesn't count. I have campus, commercial hub, and then aqueduct apparently doesn't count, which I thought it did. It does appear to scale up the cost of districts, though. Anyway, so that I don't quite understand that. But that's really nice. What's Manchester's production? Well, it's a 16 production, 24 food. This city is way better than my capital, by the way. Hi, Corfault. I'm glad you're able to catch me on Twitch. <laughs> Anyway, so there's another unit here, which we will continue to shoot at, because why not? Wait, no, not move up here. I can still shoot, right? Yeah. So in case you're wondering, is the AI good at this game tactically? The answer is no. No, it is not. <laughs> no, it is not. And I can't shoot because there's a hill tile. I can't shoot over the hill tile. But I can shoot with this guy. Note that the AI did not pillage anything, did not attack anything, it just shuffled its units around and did nothing. So, yep. Stand there for fog busting. Okay. Yeah, this city is really good. Um, my capital kind of sucks, but, <laughs> um, but I can mine some of these tiles, right? I should mine that tile. I just need, I need to get the thing that gives builders more charges. Where's the one? That's feudalism, right? Okay, never mind, screw that. We're going for feudalism right now. I want <laughs> I want to make builders stronger because they're very, very crucial. Um, and I'm also going to have Manchester just churn out some builders as soon as this mark gets done because <laughs> I need them to improve tiles really badly. Aqueduct is not a specialty district. Okay, so it's a district but not a specialty district. Gotcha. That's good to know. Um, why don't I have this guy... Go fog bus to the east. Okay. By the way, how much does it cost to rush build a builder? 310. Okay, that's the same as a worker in Civ 5. Probably not a coincidence. Okay, yes, I know. Several cities need housing badly, like Newcastle. Yeah, that looks good. And it's building the aqueduct. Yeah, obviously Newcastle can't do anything until its aqueduct is done. Yep, just promoted to heal. I guess getting shot at gives you experience. I'd imagine the whole world is one big machine. Okay, research. Let's see what's next. Um, so I got that. Stirrups does nothing for me because I can't build a knight because I have no iron, so that's pointless. <laughs> this is pretty pointless too, so let's just go for education. I'd love to get um, a university up on my campus districts. I have two of them, I'd love to put in... What's this? What does this torch mean? Oh, they finally pillaged it. Jeez, he shuffled around enough. Okay, so we'll have to rebuild that. What? 16 turns? Oh my god, that's okay. So that's going to take a long time to fix. 16 turns? That's crazy. Anyway, that does seem... So they finally did a little damage to me in this war. It's good to know that pillaging does seem to have like its consequences. I don't know why it would take that long to fix, though. Alright, so we took care of that. Um... So what this shows is I need to get a builder over here and get some more production on some of these tiles because um, I don't I need more production. Jeez. Okay, so that was the one and only thing they did that seems to have affected me. Also curious, how much does it cost to upgrade? Two hundred gold. Okay, that's actually non-trivial. By the way, I'm content to let this war last, because I can keep getting experience by shooting his guys, and it's not like they're doing anything. 
the Civ Six try to punish you in some respects. In some respects, it um, it scales the cost of districts up. Like the districts keep getting more expensive the more you build. Otherwise, no. So one thing I've already talked about is changing it so the either that that penalty is lower or making it so the districts don't keep scaling up in cost. Um, because in every other way, I kind of like this. Yeah, and um, and because of housing also, housing tends to favor having a bigger empire because you're really you can't really grow upwards that much in the early game, which means you kind of need to grow outwards. Okay, so yeah, I need to get builders down to Bradford and Birmingham because like they both have no builders right now, and that means they're wasting a lot of potential tile stuff. Settlers also scale in cost, that's true, but settlers are pretty cheap in this game. Anyway, Bradford and Birmingham, that's near enough a mountain that you could build an aqueduct. Um, yeah, here. I could write here. You're correct. That would be close enough. Correct. Civs 4 mod, Civ 6, Civ 4 mod, turn off city states, turn off increasing costs for districts, settlers, builders, turn off one unit per tile, double tile, uh, I don't know about double tile yields, the tile yields are not that bad in this game, Brick, um, like look, this is a 1-4 tile, that's pretty darn good, um, like this, this, um, this wheat is a 5 food tile, like that's, that's Civ 4 type yields, um, so I don't think the yields would need to be changed, personally, anyway, let's get this guy over towards the coast, I already have that mod. Um, I think most of this game is pretty good. It's just there's some small things that I might be interested in tweaking. Oh, look at that. They just sailed away. Builders do increase in cost every time you build one. I thought that they increased in, in cost with each turn that goes by, not with each one that you build. Could be wrong on that, though. I thought they increased in cost um, with each turn that passes or something like that. Okay, so Bradford finished a monument. Let's do a builder here, because I don't think I'm going to... I can't just cash rush them everywhere, and it needs one pretty badly. I also... It would really help if I could boost this by building farms. I don't know if I'm going to get that in time, though. Okay, so clear. I don't know if production overflows in this game, either, to be honest. All right, so clear the rainforest. So that finishes the... Oh, that's really cool. You can finish something mid-turn if you use... That's interesting. So we finish the market like mid-turn, which is really interesting. This is really sweet, by the way. <laughs> All builders can build one extra improvement. So Manchester's currently capped at size 9. is not going to be able to grow further than that. This doesn't provide housing, does it? No. Okay. We'd seriously love to build this, and it's not that expensive, but let's get another builder out first, maybe after that. Let me look at the, what the city's working. Okay, so we can't really grow anymore, because we're at minus one amenities, which does what exactly? Okay, minus 15% growth, minus 5% non-food yields. Yeah, we'll have to try to solve that. So we will need to get some happiness, more happiness going at some point. And we fit the housing cap again. Okay, so growing further is not going to do that much. So let's toss someone in the commercial district for more money. Um, I don't really see a tile I'd want to change here, though. Because, like, I could swap off this tile, but only for a 2-1 tile, which is not very good. <laughs> Builders finally organize. Pyramids do not expire. Okay, I may try to go for that. It also has some very specific requirements. Like, it has to be built in desert, that kind of thing. Uh, also, Bradford is going, going to try for Petra in Bradford, because this is, like, the perfect city. It has a lot of desert tiles. Um, Sheffield wouldn't be a terrible spot for that either. And all the units sailed away. So, whoop de doo They're all gone now. Anyway, uh, so what do we have? Archers? Might be time to... Well, we're not going to be able to take that city. We need a melee unit. Like, the archers can do damage, but we'll need a melee unit or two to bust through. How many cities does this guy even have? He, all right, yeah, he does not seem popular with anybody. Wait. Intel report. No, I mean, he's at war with me. How do we even talk to him? At war. Okay. 
maybe he won't talk to me at all right now. Oh well. Could be the... Wait, do I have a promotion available? Oh no, that's an upgrade. It's really hard to tell how much XP these guys have. Oh, here it is. Jesus Christ. That's the XP bar? Who the heck thought that was a good idea? Here it is. Jeez. Okay. Yeah, seriously, who the heck thought that was a good idea? I will never know. All right, let's move over here. Eh, there we go. Can't shoot him, but I can move into position. I might start trying to shuffle some of these guys across the water. Let's make sure I have units to cover fire for them, because they can embark. Tried to tell me yesterday, David, yeah. Just not a very smart, um, not the smartest interface decision. Let's just leave it at that. Okay. So Birmingham grew. It's working a production tile. Uh, let's work, continue to work more food right now. Just work food. It'll take forever to build the monument, but that's fine. It'll grow quickly to another pop point. Yep, all right, Bradford needs that builder. It sucks at my holy site. So I've been really weak on faith the whole game, and now I've been set back further on faith by having my holy site be the only thing that took damage. Hello. Nice of you to move right next to me, where I can shoot you. <laughs> America used a warrior to clear a barb encampment. Okay. What's that? People may rebel. Okay, yeah. I don't think it's that bad there. I know it needs more amenities. Maybe we can trade for some. This isn't a luxury, is it? No, gypsum's not a luxury. Okay. Sure, let's see. We can probably tr let's see if he has anything to trade. He does not like Congo. Wait, no, gypsum is a luxury resource? Huh? Okay. It. I hovered over it and it did not say that. Gypsum. It doesn't say luxury, but apparently it is. Okay, well, we'll connect it with that builder. And in fact, this is probably important enough that I'm just going to rush it. It's that or upgrade to... No, wait, I can't. I need 310 to do that rush. Okay. Civ so 6 is pretty good so far. Not perfect. But not bad. That's some good damage there. Let's see if I can shoot from here. Yep. This attack has not gone well for you, Congo. <laughs> nice. Ranged units don't seem to get as much XP as melee units do for shooting. Alright. Now, of course, that unit's defenseless. Wow. Oh, size 10. Can't try to take the city until I get some kind of melee unit um, with, like, battering ram to knock down the walls. But at the very least, we can keep shooting any units that pop out. Poor London. Can't grow. Stuck at small sizes. Their offer. Okay, he's willing to give me gold to make peace. Let's say no for right now. Try again later. Because see, he knows he's losing right now. Gypsum is a luxury. Yeah, it's really weird though, when I highlighted it, it did not say luxury. I guess they just don't say that in this game. So yeah, we need to um, improve this, because I've got multiple copies. Hi, Ant hi uh, Antisocial. Alright, so I have another Envoy free. 
And Candy has no Suzerain. So you can get that. Or production in industrial zone. And this also does not have a Suzerain. Uh, the production's probably better right now. What's this quest? Send a trade route. Send a trade route. Okay. Let's do that. So we are now the suzerain of... Uh, which city is this? Of Hong Kong. <laughs> All the way over here. It's a, it's a close relationship. <laughs> So anyway, that'll give me a little bit more production in industrial zones, which I have none right now, but I will here in a minute. As London's working on it. Can I hit that unit? Yes, I can. Yeah, take that. Rome seems to have an awful lot of units up here. All right. Okay, so this war is essentially over. Hong Kong, yeah, okay, so Hong Kong declares war too. In Sydney. I don't know if you can hear him on this woofing around in the background on the stream. Sydney. I guess I might as well see what's down there. So Rome's founded a religion. He'll probably try to spread it to me. England becoming the suzerain of Hong Kong, far away. Another Civ Force survivor? I don't know. It's hard to say. At, at the moment, I'd have to say I don't see that happening, but things could certainly change. So Trajan tried to conquer Zanzibar and failed. Oh, I can't... Oh... I was going to embark these units, but there's cliffs. Okay. Oh, that's why they were had so much trouble, because they couldn't embark because of cliffs. Okay. That's good to know. At least that makes a little bit more sense for what the AI was doing. Okay. Like, it still doesn't make a ton of sense, but it makes slightly more sense. Yeah, so not a lot going on this turn. Okay. I'd probably need a road between London and Newcastle, too. Alright. And, of course, I can't take this city, but I can certainly shoot units that come out of the city. You actually can't rename cities in this game currently. I know it's crazy, right? But you currently you can't rename cities. Oh, hello. There's still a unit over there. I don't know where it was, but we'll just shoot it down. So more religions are f being founded. It looks like I am not going to found a religion this game. Yeah, it looks like that's just not going to happen this game. That's fine, though. I'll have to do another game to explore the religious side of things. I am enjoying shooting down all these warriors, though. This ill-conceived attack. The AI seems to struggle with strategic resources. Like, it seems as though it really has trouble finding um, resources to upgrade. Uh, let's see. What does this one do? Military engineer. Can construct roads, forts, and airships. That would be nice to be able to do that. Boosted. Have a government with six policy slots. I think I'm gonna grab this just so I can build pikes. Like if I had two pikes, I could take. If I um, 
Yeah, if I had two pikes to form like a front line and then a battering ram or whatever it is to knock down the city walls, I could conquer Congo, and that's probably worth doing. Probably. Okay, so we finished a oh, builder. Let's do another builder. Where are they? Four turns. Actually, let's make a bid for pyramids here. Oh, I can only build over my high food tile. Mm. Or I can build down here. Mm. 170 gold. Well, I don't want to lose that tile, so if I'm going to do this, it's going to have to be on that tile. All right, we'll make a, a stab at it. It won't even take 14, 15 turns or whatever because I'm going to be clearing tiles and um, building stuff. And I'll have London do a builder next to keep working on this city. Might as well keep buffing my best city. Really want to get that builders get five actions. And if I can get pyramids, that would be up to six, which would be really nice. I have only more. Uh, no, Civ 6 is not better than Civ 4, let's not be crazy, but it is better than Civ 5. It has a lot of rough, it has rough stuff around the edges. Okay, they're going to attack, that's fine. It is not going to be enough to kill my archer. Alright, he's up to 10 gold per turn and diamonds, so let's accept that deal. We can always come back and attack him later. Yeah, he knew he was losing, so... So that means I have a spare 